China and Canada's new trade treaty goes into full effect on Wednesday, this after more than two years of delays. The agreement will give investors from both countries protection against each other for unfair treatment by the government and also the right to sue each other for lost revenue. Christian Yeo explains. Trade with China is hugely important to Canada, worth around 65 billion US dollars a year and rising. Canadian companies export mining and energy products, wood pulp and cooking oil to China, while Chinese exporters ship electronics and heavy machinery here. Investors, Canadian and Chinese alike, are eyeing up opportunities on both sides of the Pacific. But the economic and legal systems of these countries are substantially different. Now it's believed the long-awaited Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement, or FIPA, will smooth over those differences. There are certain companies in Canada that wish to invest in China but are very wary of it because they don't feel they have uh, investment protection, protection that really like this treaty because now it'll, it will allow them to go into China and invest and, uh, and have, a, have a degree of comfort that they do not currently have. The treaty works both ways, protecting Chinese investors from unfair treatment by the Canadian government. Canada has uh, over two dozen of these agreements, um, and there's literally thousands of these bilateral agreements around the world. If you bring your money into Canada, you will be treated like a Canadian. But what constitutes unfair treatment? Critics of FIPA warn it gives corporations the right to sue Canada for lost revenue as a result of changes to government policy. I think the main purpose is to give a very powerful tool for very large companies to put... Uh, intensive pressure on governments when they don't like what the government might do. This could have implications on the success of the Northern Gateway, a proposed pipeline to ship oil to Asia. China's state-owned oil company Sinook, which acquired Canada's Nexon last year, could sue the government if the pipeline fails to materialize. Another concern is that cases are heard in private courtrooms shrouded in secrecy. Why is it that we're relying on for-profit arbitration industry without robust judicial review and safeguards of judicial independence and checks against conflicts of interest? It seems very strange. This trade treaty with China has been met with apprehension. Some say that these treaties tend to favor the more powerful partner. A similar agreement with the United States has seen American companies sue the Canadian government for $140 million. Meanwhile, the American government has never lost a case. And giving state-backed oil companies like Sinook the power to threaten Canada with costly legal action is an untested prospect which could influence decisions made here in Parliament. Christian Yeo, CCTV, Toronto.